Just counts down from three against that. Well, welcome, guys. Um, glad y'all are here this morning. This is going to be our first mastermind group. Uh, today, what we're really going to do is kind of cast a vision for you guys. Um, Jared and I have been working for about three weeks, uh, just getting this idea, taking it and, and putting some, some skin and some meat on the bones. We kind of want y'all to help as well. I know we had some of those questions. Jared's going to go over those <clears throat> after I kind of present uh, a mission and vision and a couple of other things. So, uh, real quick, you can kind of see uh, Jared's going to scroll down and you'll be able to see the mission statement. I know I included it in. Actually, we're going to start with the vision. I'm sorry. And I know I included it in the, um, the email that I sent you guys. So, <clears throat> as Jared and I were working together, uh, you know, we were thinking, Moses, you know this, we, how many business plans have we written together? You know, goodness, how many pages did we write together? But with the vision, the vision, the purpose of the vision is to be broad. And so, you know, what, you know, what long-term strategic thing are we doing very broad down the road? Whereas then the vision is, I mean, I'm sorry, the mission is, you know, what are we doing every single day? What are we doing? More in the, in the shorter term. Um, so for the vision statement for, for the mastermind group, what we put was to increase the capacity of business professionals to lead the organizations of the future. Guys, <laughs> there's several of us in here right now, and then in the weeks to come, and the months to come, there'll be more of us. We are the future, you know, and for those of us that have taught before, for those of us that will teach in the future, we're going to be teaching the future. Um, to, you know, we have the ability to drastically change the world we live in. And, you know, as a, as a group that is founded on biblical principles, we really want to be able to, to prepare the leaders of this next generation of the young generations as, as they get ready to enter the job force, enter those leadership roles. So, that vision again is to increase the capacity of business professionals to lead the organizations of the future. As we move to the mission statement, the mission statement that we wrote was this mastermind group mission is to facilitate the opportunity to grow, share, and foster biblical business principles for leaders in our community. Very similar to the vision with you know, a little bit more of a narrow scope. Uh, we want to be able to collectively get together and and talk about this. And, and I kind of want to, before going any further, I kind of want to talk about this. Um, about, hmm, I want to say two years, maybe a year ago, let's just say a year, I approached my dad and I was like, Dad, I need, I need somebody to mentor me in the business side. You know I a semester into my MBA at DBU, and I just I want somebody to mentor. And I didn't have anybody for the longest time, and all of a sudden, then I was <laughs> my life was just bombarded with people, which is amazing. I had a bunch of older uh, businessmen and a few businesswomen that were placed into my life that were able to be mentors and some of those things. Well, then I found myself desiring uh, a group of men that could be around me. That we're in the same phase of business leadership for that one score and why. So business leadership, why, and um, finding themselves thinking a similar way. You know, it, it's difficult for me to connect with someone who owns a million or two million or three million dollar company because there's so much further ahead. So we, I first started talking to my friend Neil, who was in Austin. I know you'll see this video, so hey, buddy. And then I went to uh, Blake, who, who we invited to this group as well, and then Jared. And me and Jared, <clears throat> I kind of pitched the idea to him, and uh, we just we took off from there. I mean, we had met a few times before to talk about business. There was never anything for me. Um, so, you know, my goal, this was kind of built out of a need that I had. I wanted to be able to surround myself with people that are smart, that are leaders, that have the ability to 
be a lot better at things that I'm not as good at that I can bounce ideas off of. And so in, in, the, in the necessity to fill that need, we kind of started this group. Part of that is, you know, I want to, and, and, and as Jared is kind of, as me and Jared are kind of doing this together, I want us to be able to deliver value to you guys. So we find ourselves in an interesting place because, you know, not only are we a part of the group, and not only do we want this and need this, so we express that to each other, but then we want to figure out a way to bring value to you guys in the form of, and Jared's going to talk about this a little bit later, so I won't really get it, in the form of whether it be books or whether it be guys coming and speaking, whether, you know, we've got, I've got a professor who I talked to, Moses and I have talked to other, and he has agreed to tentatively come and speak, and I can do that. And so things like that, where we can just bring y'all value, um, and at the same time, surround ourselves with with people in the pipeline. So that's, that's really my goal. <clears throat> so once again, that, that mission statement is, you know, the Masterminds Group mission is to facilitate the opportunity to grow, share, and foster biblical business principles to leaders in our community. So, and I'm going to write this on the board, so hopefully the people on this, watching this video can see it. So we've got this little diagram here. And so my, my thought behind business is that I guess we should step back a little bit further. So we've got God, and God created man. And so I kind of look at this one. So if you look back to the medieval times, or, you know, 1800s, whenever, um, the lord of the land was the owner of it. He owned it all. And he would appoint stewards to oversee that land to make sure the crops were growing, um, to make sure the servants or the peasants were doing their job. Um, and then the steward would collect all the money and then go pay the Lord who owned it all. The steward had responsibility, but ultimately owned nothing. So That to me I don't know if y'all can see this on that screen. So over here we've got it says God and man, which equals Lord and Steward, which equals owner and manager. So I kind of see it as as a believer, um, you know, God owns everything. And that we are his managers or his stewards. You know, whichever word you prefer, and that we have been given a responsibility with whatever he gives us to do it for the better of his kingdom. So, you know, Moses, if one day God blesses you with some type of medical practice and you know, you're making boobies of money, which I really, that would be awesome. I really hope so. I hope you're making $20 million a year 10 years from now because I believe that not only you being a part of this group, but just who you are, uh, as I've gotten to know you over the years, that you would do good with that money, and you would be a good manager of that money. And I realize that it's really all God's, and He's entrusted it with me, and I'm going to do my part. Um, so that's one of the things that uh, I believe we're really going to talk about, because I believe it's vital when it comes to, to running a business. Um, so we've got three guiding verses here that are kind of going to, that, that I think really pertain to the group. Um, the first verse that I've got is Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Very self-explanatory. Kind of, kind of pulls this into perspective a little bit. And the second one, which is probably my favorite, and this one actually Jared uh, was kind enough to add to it. Uh, it's Proverbs 27.17. says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. I love that because you get this picture painted in your head of a blacksmith sharpening a sword. Now hopefully a sword's not made of iron. I don't think that would be very good. Um, but, you know, the way you sharpen it is with iron. And uh, kind of the way I see that is is in this group together, we can all be 
sharpening each other. And, and it doesn't matter if, if one individual, uh, I use the medical field with you, Moses, as an example, and Joshua, now you're in the ministry. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's all the same purpose when we get down to it uh, if we believe in the same thing. So if we believe in that everything belongs to God, it's all the same. It doesn't matter what we're doing. We can all sharpen each other and get each other better. Uh, so the third verse I've got is Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10. Uh, it says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them fall down, one can help the other up. That's another thing that I kind of see for the group is like, <clears throat> I've, I've told Josh, Josh and I uh, meet once every other week for, for something else. I'm more of like an accountability style group. And, um, I've told them about one of my endeavors that I do plan on sharing in here with everybody. And, you know, I would love for when I get down on myself or if I don't reach that milestone that I set, for him to come and pull me up and pick me up and say, man, you can do this. What can I do to help you? What can I do to serve you in getting you to your goal? And vice versa. If he's got something that he's working, I want to be able to do the same thing for him. So, so those are really those guiding verses that kind of shaped the way we wrote the vision and the mission, uh, and even the values. So so real quick, we're going to go through the values pretty quickly. Um, the first value is just integrity. Uh, and I define this as the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles and moral upright, uprightness. And as I'm reading that, I realized that probably if I'm going to be moral, morally upright, I'm probably going to say, I did not define this. Webster's defined this. <laughs> um, so that's the first one, so integrity. I think it's really important, guys. When I... When I hire somebody for the, I have the blessing to have the opportunity to be hired from the company I work for now, and that's the first thing I've got to do, is I'm like, how's your, define integrity for me. What, what does integrity mean to you, and do you have it? Because we can't teach that. I can teach somebody just about any, tr- any, any work trait that they have to have to work for the company that I work for, but I can't teach them to be honest. I can't teach them to tell the truth. So integrity, really important. Uh, compassion. Uh, that's defined as sympathetic pity and concern for the suffering and misfortune of others. I like this because Jesus was compassionate. And I, I like to think as believers, you know, we should be striving to be like Jesus. And therefore, I think even in business, we can show compassion. I don't think that doesn't mean not having a spine. And being spineless, but you know, I think that there's an, a, a way to show compassion while sticking to the principles you set for your business, and and and, and thus so becoming more like Christ. So the third value that I've got here is a servant's heart. Yeah, you know, and this is defined as performing duties of service for another person or an organization. The second thing I usually will say whenever I've been in an interview with someone, I mean, you know, you're here, whenever you're for the job, you know, this is manual labor, this is what we do, but to be honest, we're in the service industry, we serve people, and you gotta understand, if you can understand that we serve people, and if you can serve people well, to take our, from our leadership how to serve people well, this could be a great place to serve people well, it's probably not the appropriate that's really interesting. And really, I think that's what we're doing And even if it's anything fun. So, um, so servant's heart. So the, the fourth value is, is generous. And this is defined as showing your readiness to give more of something. I think that uh, leaders, especially of, um, of businesses that find themselves running them, you know, I think we have the ability to give. Because I think, you know, that one point talks about in the Bible that <clears throat> there's the gift of giving. And I, I think that along with that, and, and I'm not I'm not saying I pulled this out of the Bible, but I think that along with the gift of giving, I think there is a gift of free. I think that someone who invests and invests and invests in themselves, and even like coming to a group like this, you know, you reap what you put in, and, and I do believe that there, there is a, um, you know, as leaders, I think, I think we're called, whether it's of your time, of your money, 
of your your possessions, whatever it is, I think that we have that opportunity. So that's one of the values that we've got. Um, the fifth one is going to be uplifting. This is defined as morally or spiritually elevated, inspiring happiness or hope. So, and I believe that, I know I will go over this a little bit, and Jared may touch on it a little bit more, but one of the things that we want to be a part of this group is we want everyone here. You know, if, if, if Jared's starting a business and he's going to meet with the investors at the bank in a month and a half, we want him to be able to bring that business plan to us and present it. Just like he's going to be standing in front of the board of, of, invest, of the people that are going to invest in the company, that way we can, if need be, tear him apart and rip that business plan to shreds. But do it in such a way that's uplifting and, and constructively helping him to make it better so that when he goes to this investor, they don't want to stop. So that's kind of what, what I thought of as, as uplifting. You know, we, we don't have to agree here. We don't, because we're all going to disagree. We're all different people. We all come from different places, different backgrounds, and we've been through different life experiences. But I, I want us to try and adopt this culture that everyone's opinion is valid, and nobody may not agree with it. Um, th there may still be something there. And you actually may have something that you can open their eyes to, or they can open their eyes to. So that was one of the things that I wanted to put in value, which was uplifting. Um, and the last one is stewardship. And that kind of goes back to what what we talked about here. Um, and this is defined as, I think I defined this one as godly management or care of something. Uh, I, I really believe that when you're a good steward <clears throat> is when you're blessed and you know obviously god can choose how to bless you out of people and he can choose to bless other people um, but you know when you take care of what he's giving you i i believe in his eyes that lets him know that, oh i can trust josh for more he took care of what i gave him he trusted him with a little bit more he took care of this and he didn't take care of this um, so so that's the that's that last value stewardship uh, some verses that go along with that, I'm not going to read them, but <clears throat> um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about them. Uh, just probably refer to them at some point in time in our meetings. But one is Proverbs 27 23. And this talks about leadership. Uh, and this is, you know, this really takes leadership and kind of links it to a servant's heart. Um, so I really like that verse. I think that's a prominent verse for the group. Another one was James 1 2 through 4. This talks about steadfastness and how the diligent prosper. Um, it's a great verse, and I think that you know <laughs> it's eight o'clock on a Saturday morning, and you guys find yourselves here. I would say that's pretty diligent, you know. So uh, the third verse that I put in this in this area is John ten ten, <clears throat> when it talks about abundance, and this kind of takes us back to this right here. I believe that everything belongs to God, and you know, God equals Lord equals owner, and then man equals steward equals man. Nothing belongs to us, it all belongs to God. So, as I take you on to the last little part here, and then I'm going to hand it over to Jerry to finish the, the presentation, and then we'll just get to, get to talk and uh, get to know each other a little bit. Um, I want to talk about the culture of the group. I briefly touched on this when we talked about uplifting and the values, but you know, I want to mention again, you know, when communicating with others, with other group members, uh, feedback needs to be constructive in nature. Um, and, I, and I put in parentheses there, corrective kindness. But at the same time, you know, oh, you know what? You know, corrective kindness, that sounds so soft. Well, yeah, it does. We're all guys here. We've got a lot of testosterone. But at the same time, y'all all, all know you've been cut down by someone. And as manly as we are, it can actually stink. And I, I want this to be a place that people can come and be excited. And, you know, my big thing is when I pull some of my, my team into my office, I pull them in and I say, guys, I have this idea and I need y'all to tell me if I'm crazy or if it's if it's genius. Because I kind of think that in every genius there is a little bit of crazy. And that's okay. You know, for every uh, was it um was it Edison that he 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 atten he had like 160 attempts to create the light bulb or something. Mm -hmm. And on the hundred and sixty and my numbers are off, but the hundred and sixty first time was it a thousand? Okay, Josh. Josh is saying it's a thousand. 
let's say a thousand, and on the thousand and first time he did it, and they asked him, you know, oh, how did you do that? You failed a thousand times. And he said, no, I just figured out a thousand ways not to make a light bulb. So, you know, I put, we're gonna have we're gonna have some. I'll tell you right now, I'm gonna have some stupid ideas, and I want y'all to be able to very kindly bring me back into the light and say, Chris, you're never going to make any money here. Chris, this is not good. You're not going to help people. You know, whatever it is. Um, but do it kindly because we want people to be able to come back and and know this is a place that, that, that is safe and that they can really bring anything up. Because um, I'm, I'm warning y'all now I'm going to have some ideas that are just, they're just down there to do this. Um, so that's that. So the second part of the culture is... Um, is ideas discussed or the property of the individual disclosing and need to be kept among the group unless proper authorization to disclose is given. So this is really important. So at the back of y'all's packet, uh, me and Jared went ahead and wrote out um, a, a non-disclosure agreement. And the purpose of this, guys, is again, from a different angle, I want people to be able to come and I want them to feel safe. I want, you know, if Josh, if you've got this idea, I want you to know that you can come share it with these guys and that it's safe and that it's not going anywhere and that no one's going to see it. Um, so we are going to make it a requirement that everybody that's a part of the group does sign the non-disclosure. If there's anything that's on there that makes you feel uncomfortable, just let us know. We can probably walk you through it. It's pretty self-explanatory. It basically says if somebody comes in here with an idea, that idea belongs to them and can be talked to amongst <clears throat> each other. but can't be disclosed with anybody else unless you have the written consent of the individual who who brought the idea into uh, into life. Uh, so that's that part. Kind of go here again. You know, respect other uh, others' opinions and passions. Once again, we're all different. We come from all different places. If you're going to be passionate about something that I'm probably not passionate about. Somebody is, and and that's totally cool. And I just need to look at that as an opportunity to serve you and look at what you're passionate about and think, okay. This is not something that I'm excited about, but can I figure out a way to get excited about it for Moses in order to help him? It's not about me right now, it's about him. Um, so that's kind of what was behind that. Um, two other things we've got. <clears throat> no idea is ever dismissed. So we don't. if, if somebody has an idea, we don't want to dismiss it. Uh, but there will be times, it says, rather discussed at the time being appropriate. So there will be times if there's something that comes up when we're talking about a certain topic, say that uh, one of the group members brought for that month, and, and say somebody gets us off on the rabbit trail, we at times may redirect that and say, you know, we'll write this idea down, let's talk about it next month, or let's schedule a time that whomever came up with that idea that kind of took us away from, from what we were discussing, let's figure out a time that that's best for you, and you can bring that to the group yourself, and we can talk about that. Um, so, <clears throat> so we want to make sure we do that for you guys as well. And the last thing, um, and this is uh, this is something that I, I tell my employees now, my team at work. Um, the purpose behind this is to foster relationships and to communicate effectively. I think that those in the last month or so, I don't know how long, but I've been saying that a lot because I've been. I guess I'm really bouncing off when people see this crazy idea, but it's actually a pretty decent idea. Um, I think business can almost be summed up in those four words. I think fostering relationships and communicating effectively, it's really two different ideas. And really communicating effectively is the result of fostering a relationship. I used one of my team members, I will refrain from saying his name because y'all know him, some of y'all. Um, but I said to him the other day, I said, if you didn't call your girlfriend for three weeks, you think she'd still be your girlfriend? He, said, he started laughing. He just said, no, I don't think so. And I, or, or if she was, I'd be in a lot of trouble. I said, why? And he said, well, I didn't, I'm working on in communication. Yeah. So that's kind of how I think that communicating effectively is actually a byproduct of what comes out of fostering. So that's, that's my part of the presentation. I'd like to invite Jared up at this time. He's kind of going to take you guys through the structure. Okay, hey guys. Like I said, I'm Jared. I've already met both of you, but for the sake of the video, I'll announce myself again. Um, I would like to point out that 
the purpose of this group that Chris has been talking about has already made itself evident in me and Chris putting the group together and the way we came at it and what we did. You'll notice that Chris talked a lot about ideas, vision, values, um, and when we talked, we would have the same conversation in our in, when we would meet. And we'd be like, all right, well, let's put this together and what we think we talked about and bring it back together. And next time we meet, and we have two totally different ideas. <laughs> and so, um, well, Chris, Chris was all about you know getting the vision, getting the ideas. You know, what what's our goals? You know, how can we bring value to people? My thought when we talked about the group was, how's the group going to function? What's going to happen when we meet? How's that going to work? How is that you going to be brought to people. Um, so if you want to move down, um, <laughs> I wrote all the stuff about the structure of the group and how that's going to work. <laughs> Chris wrote all the stuff he already talked about. Yeah. So, um, and like you said, you know, me and Chris, Chris brought this to me and said, hey, like, what do you think? And I had briefly met with a guy that I didn't know very well a while back who just I met through some business stuff. And we had thought about trying to get like a referral group together. You've got part of the networking groups. Um, and that's not what we want this to be. This is not about generating leads or bringing people, more people to church or getting pool service or getting foundation repairs for me. Um, it's not all about that. And so I want to talk a little bit about the structure of the group and how that's going to help facilitate what we're doing um, and the leadership. So, um, you know, this group isn't, isn't about me and Chris getting value out of it. This isn't about me and Chris talking to you guys every week. Um, and it's not about you know a couple of people controlling what goes on. We really want this to be a group run group. You know, everyone's involved. Everyone has a say. Um, there are going to be, and like I said, um, there is a need for someone like Chris, you know, to take on this this servant leader, the servant role of leadership to help make it happen. But it's not about controlling the group. It's about helping the group. Um, and so we talked about, you know, like, well, do we want to have, you know, actual people or do we want to just meet Chris, just kind of do it behind the scenes and no one really understands what's going on. So, but what we decided to kind of put it in writing. And so right now, the idea is to have two people that kind of help and, and for the sake of, and because we're starting it and, you know, we're not sure who's going to be involved at what level, it's probably going to be me and Chris, um, where the chair is going to be responsible for making sure that the discussions kind of are going in the way that we need them to go. Um, that we stay on track, um, you know, helping the group kind of finalizing the ideas and what's going to be our future topics, what books we want to go through. Um, and um, we'll talk a little bit about it later, but we're going to have segments in our meetings. We're going to have the majority of the meeting is probably going to be on a specific topic that we're going through and really trying to help each other grow. And then the last maybe third of the meeting is going to be where we talk about, um, you know, what ideas we've had lately, what, what, you know, what's running around in our head getting feedback on it, um, and then talking about future topics as well. So one third is going to be more um, discussion, bringing in ideas, group feedback, and the first part of the meeting is going to be more about learning and growing together on specific things we've talked about previously. Um, and the vice chair is kind of going to be like more like an assistant, and it's going to be helping the chair stay impartial in the discussion, but helping the chair guide appropriately, uh, rather than taking a side and defending and attacking. Um, Maintaining a list of future topics, keeping track of discussions. Um, you know, if, if people miss and they want to know what we talked about, possibly keeping um, track of the minutes and, and the ideas discussed. Um, and then we get to membership. Um, and so this is something that was kind of hard to, to put into words. So I hope that people can kind of take what I'm meaning with the meaning of it, not the wording of it. Um, we're not trying to be exclusive. We're not trying to keep people out of our group. Um, but at the same time, we want people who have a desire to be here. Um, if if it's you're just kind of coming to hang out and eat donuts, which I don't think any any of these, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Who wants to get up at seven o'clock on a Saturday to come eat a donut? <laughs> um, but at the same time, we want people who are going to come consistently, who want to be there, who want to contribute, who want to grow, and want to help others. Um, and you know, in this, in, in participate in group discussion, feedback, um, you know, if you have. And this is an open group, so it's not like you have to fit into a certain category. But at the same time, our whole group is going to be focused on small business owners, aspiring small business owners, entrepreneurs, um, you know, certain types of investing are taking on a very active role, real estate for one, um, people who are wanting to do something on their own and grow something. I know right now Chris is in a role of leadership at a small company. Um, I'm in a role of leadership in my small company. Um, and, you know, 
you in a role of leadership at a, at a church, and you, know, you just graduated looking to do something. So you don't have to fit in one in a cookie cutter position. Um, but these are the people that are probably going to find the most value, and that's who we're kind of focusing on. Um, so, um, and this is another thing, you know, membership isn't automatic. Because you come, uh, doesn't make you a member. Um, someone who wants to visit, I wouldn't want them to feel pressured that they have to come again. So I said, you know, it's not it's not automatic, but it's voluntary. Um, you have to decide if it's something that you want to do. Um, and anyone you bring in, it's, hey man, come check it out. There's absolutely no pressure. Um, if you don't want to be there, we don't want you there. So if you want to be there, great, but keep coming. Um, so, and this, and, you know, that, like I said, to keep people from feeling pressured, um, but at the same time, we don't want people coming sporadically, not deciding if they're a member or not. You know, well, me and Chris kind of talked about maybe one to two meetings that will help them figure it out. And at that point, we would ask them to make their decision um, because we do want this to be a group that, um, that's a community, that we get to know each other, can really help each other. Um, and uh, like Chris talked about, um, before attending a, the first meeting, when we'll keep these on hand, but we are going to make everyone who sits in the meeting sign a, sign a non-disclosure uh, because there's, you know, even other, you know, beyond just business ideas, there's, we're going to be talking about some stuff. I mean, maybe we talk about salaries or pay. Maybe we're about to start our own company and about to leave our current business. We don't want our owners or, you know, managers or whatever getting that, get, you know, hearing about that beforehand. So this really is to protect the individuals. Um, really, there's, you know, not to protect me, to, you know, but each individual person um, right now we're looking at probably having meetings once a month if we think that it, you know we could really find some more value in it maybe move to twice a month but we don't want this to be a weekly thing where people are having to invest lots of time and that'll be up to the group um, and we really don't want meetings to be held in a house and that's why I you know pursued meeting here in our conference room at work so like I said approximately the first two-thirds of the meeting will be on like a designated topic that the group has decided on. Um, the last third will be designated for sharing new ideas and feedback. Um, another thing that we, I, we, you know, I kind of thought of is that maybe um, when, when, once we get to discussion topics on, you know, I want to talk about real estate investing. That's what, that's a big deal to me. Chris is talking about, you know, entrepreneurship, starting some sort of, you know, small business mentoring type thing. Um, when a discussion topic is proposed, we don't really want that person to lead that topic. Because um, they're going to have a, have a vested interest in where it goes. You know, they already have their conceived idea. So we really want kind of a, a third party, neutral person to guide the discussion, which will allow that person to actually talk about it, but also allow someone else to guide it and make sure other people get a chance to talk about it. Um, we really want to make this um, something where people don't ever feel like the person leading the discussion has an agenda and is trying to make people believe what they believe. Um, discussion topics. Uh, and I know we're not all, always going to agree on what we're doing, uh, but I think a simple majority agreeing on something is good enough. Uh, so, and, and these are just ideas for future, you know, books, business plan, you know, books, and that's what we're going to do first. We're going to go through a book that um, I started, Chris has started, and we're trying to figure out. Um, I've talked to with my dad, who's a small business owner for 18 years, and uh, he said it's one of the most, uh, probably important books he read. And so we really think this will help us you know, set a strong base for what we want to do and how we want to grow personally. Um, but if, you know, in the future, it could be we could all share our business plans or business ideas with each other uh, one week at a time. Um, we could talk about different types of investments or, you know, how to invest in small companies or other things. Um, maybe it's personal growth ideas, which is this book takes a little bit of a, that aspect of it. Um, or maybe have people come in and, and like a professor come in and talk to us about a given topic. Uh, but like I said, we want this to be a, a group thing, and so it's not what, like we talked about, it's not the chair and the vice chair deciding everything. Um, me and Chris kind of did that for the first couple of weeks, <laughs> but um, we really haven't had that group feedback yet. So um, I did, you know, after uh, I've been in a position at, at work where I've had to kind of write my own contract with my own job responsibilities, took it to my, my boss and said, oh, here, at the end of that, why don't you put um, um, note, job responsibilities could change at any time. So at the, end, at the end of uh, over here, we have the structure of this group may change over time. Uh, we don't want this to be a static, unchanging document. We want this to be something that the, the group can go back to. I mean, kind of like a charter or something where we can say, hey, you know what? This is what we needed when we started, but we're, we're at a different point now when we need something different. Um, so, but that will also be decided on by the group. 
So that's what we uh, that's what we've got for our introductions, and now we're going to move to just some kind of talking and group discussion and stuff. So thanks, guys.